track. Two by four by quarter aluminum. Really spendy stuff. It's very strong though. You can get a track up to 16 feet long. Allows you to do material up to, it's like 10 foot. Uh, this one's really short because I mostly do just square shoulder tenons on it and chair legs and stuff. Short material. Tail stock support. Nylon roller in here. See the little hole? There's holes every inch so you can adjust the adjust the height. That allows you to cut a tapered tenon or a perfectly straight tenon but that will adjust that and of course it adjusts for different height table saws. Put in a new part. Pull it back on the hammer. It draws it back. It goes forward. Pins immediately. And resistance there is to it. This is a guard. This guard to keep your hands away from that blade. Variable speed. And slower. Up to 125 RPM. doesn't have to go fast. Ninety volt DC motor. This bearing absorbs all the pressure that comes at it. This bearing takes the pressure, not the motor. So it closes with about 120 pounds of pressure on the part, but this bearing absorbs that pressure so that there's no thrust pressure onto the bearings in the in the gear motor. Everything moves back and forth on linear bearings. Tailstock has four of these linear bearings on turn ground and polished shaft. These are long life parts calculated in many many millions of cycles that this thing can run. Many many millions of tenons it'll cut. Each tenon that it cuts once it's set it's going to be exactly the same as the next one, as the one after it. Start, stop. For travel. Start, bypass button. Start, bypass button. Or start, and it comes down to the limit switch, momentary contact switch. This one goes to a time delay relay set at two and a half seconds. You can change the adjustment on how long it stops. The time delay is so it cleans up the cut at the shoulder. The system is air over oil. Push the button and it immediately powers up the air cylinder. There, come around this, this side. <coughs> okay, the system is air. This one is air. This one is oil. When you hit the button, powers up the air. Okay, powers it going in the one direction. That powers it in the other direction. Okay. Powers it one direction, powers it other direction. Now the oil, it makes a positive displacement. You have, the oil has to leave this cylinder for it to move. So when the oil goes through those two little valves, the oil is metered by the two little knobs, meter control valves. Each valve is free flow in one direction and restricted flow in the other. So it's infinitely adjustable speed in both directions. Vacuum system. Oh, plugs in right here. Cleans it up pretty good. It gets about 90% of the 
stuff that it cleans out with the vacuum. Again, linear bearings, but on this, <laughs> there's only three on this end, keeps it from binding, gives a little bit of freer movement. Turn ground and polished shaft, turn ground and polished. You can see the other bearing inside of, one inside there, one there, and the third one is down below, right down there. What does it take to run it? This is one and a half horsepower. This is about as low power as you can run it on. This works pretty good for the square shoulder tenon, not a problem. If you can put it on a three horse or a five horse saw for cutting radius shoulder tenons, much better. But it will work as far as this small of the saw, one and a half horsepower. Pressure, have to maintain 30 pounds of pressure in this reservoir. If, if this reservoir does not have uh, pressure in it, then the oil cylinder, when it's moving back and forth, it will cavitate and you will get microscopic bubbles in the oil. So this has to have at least 20 pounds of pressure to maintain everything. 30 pounds is good. Adjustment, tenon length, you can cut a square shoulder tenon up to nine inches long and a radius shoulder tenon because of the shoulder takes up space. Uh, basically six inches long on a radius shoulder tenon is maximum. There's some parts that we make that are, have an extra long tenon. It's nice to be able to do it. When we use the oil system, the type of cylinders that we uh, get are the tie rod cylinders from McMaster Car. They're out of Chicago. We've never had any problem uh, with the McMaster Car tie rod cylinders. Other manufacturers, yeah, we don't mix it up anymore. We've tried a couple other manufacturers. Some of them gave us problems. Never a problem with the McMaster Car tie rod cylinders. They've always been good. On here I have taken inscribed. I take a sharp point and mark this so I can get back to exactly where it sets up. When I change it from a radius shoulder tendon to a square shoulder tendon setting, this is one and a half degrees. Here, here it is at one and a three and an eighth up to there, come down 14 inches and three and three eighths. It's one and a half degrees off of 90. So it's not 90 degrees, it's kicked off. So it cuts, you see there's no chip on the shoulder, it cuts on the upstroke. On the downstroke of the blade, it's moving away from the material, so there's no chip on this outside edge. Blade set at eight degrees, tipped towards tipped into the material. Change tenon diameter by raising or lowering the blade. The movement on this cylinder is slowed down by having, see that little exhaust port, exhaust port? Look in the middle of that little hole, or that little exhaust port plug. There is a 20 thousandths hole drilled through there. So it lets air, you can hear it hiss. It's moving slow, otherwise when I just go bam and smack back and forth like a rocket, but it doesn't. It's set has to exhaust through there so it slows it down. The lock handle inside of here, under here, nylon and a steel plate. So this coming down is turning onto the steel but in between the, the steel and the aluminum tube is the slippy nylon in between there.